When I came to college, I did not know one single thing about myself. Like literally nothing. Coming from a tiny rural high school in Connecticut, I thought that Boston and Northeastern might be a good idea for me. Big new city, thousands of new faces, and plenty of time for me to figure out who I am and who I want to be. But I was pretty quickly overwhelmed. Everyone here seemed to have that figured out already. Their goals, dreams, aspirations, and I just kind of spun my wheels, struggling to know my own basic interests and passions, what I wanted to do with my life. It felt like I had jumped into a pool and completely overestimated my ability to swim. So, safe to say, beginning of freshman fall, I was in a full-on identity crisis. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I doing? Ah. I wanted to hit the ground running so badly, but where was the ground? Where do I start? Now, in my one credit undeclared class freshman year, we had only one homework assignment. Find a group or a club on campus that you might identify with, or find community in, or at least go to the info session for. <laughs> and I, I got a list where none really popped out to me, except for one. It was called Strong Women, Strong Girls, or SWIDGE for short. SWIDGE is a mentoring organization for girls in grades three through five on female empowerment and feminism. At that point, I felt so powerless, I figured maybe I, if I can learn to empower others, I can learn to empower myself. So I applied, and I got in. I was placed at a small school in Dorchester with four older, experienced mentors who told me the same thing every day from day one. Alicia, you have to show up to mentoring. Unless the world ends, or your leg breaks, or both, you gotta be there. Now, first, I took that as being there physically, and so I was. I was there on time, every week, ready to go. And I think I knew deeper down there's a bigger meaning behind showing up, but I didn't really know how to ask, and so I didn't. But as my journey into Switch continued into my second and third years, I began to get a better understanding for what showing up really meant. It meant being there physically, sure, but it ran deeper. It meant showing the girls that you wanted to be there caring about them and their lives, being excited for them and with them. Most importantly, it meant showing the girls that you were in their corner and then proving it. Now, in Switch, we showcase showing up by focusing on two key things, role modeling and representation. It's built into our curriculum, so I'll show you how. We start every lesson with what we call peaks and valleys, where a peak is a good part of your day or your week and a valley is a challenge or an obstacle. The mentors are trained to apply to each peak and valley individually with feedback. So if a girl says, my peak is that I had a great test today, the mentor might say, okay, cool, what subject, why is it so good? If the girl says, the, my peak is, or my valley is that the boys let me play football with them today, the mentor might say, I know you can play football, you know you can play football, go out there and show them. Anything to show the girl that what she is saying is important and that the mentors are listening. Then we go into bios. We have one biography every week of a woman or girl doing something amazing. Now here, language is very important. It's built to make the, the story in the bio sound tangible and attainable to our girls. That bio success could be our girl success. And because we mentor mostly girls who are black and brown, we make a very strong point to showcase as many women as, of color as possible as we can. Representation for young girls of color is so critically important at that age so giving them access to stories that they can relate to has a huge impact. Then we have the activity, which is based on the lesson. So if you learned about, say, Little Miss Flint, the activity might be a skit or a poster board about a cause the girls care about and why we, the mentors, should care too. This is time for the girls and us to get silly and have fun together, but also really build that mentor-mentee bond. And then we end with journals where the girls can write a letter to one mentor or all of them about the lesson. There's typically a prompt question for uh, the journals, but really it's just the girls calling us pretty or talking about their days or their favorite foods. But still, again, it's very important to build and hone that mentor-mentee relationship and show the girls that we will show up for them even when we're not physically in the room. Now, I have stories upon stories about why that bond is so important, so I want to share a few. This first one. We had a, a bio on Marley Diaz, the 11-year-old founder of the 1,000 Black Girl Books movement. 
Marley compiled over 11,000 books with black and brown female leads so that girls like her could see herself in the stories that she was reading. After the bio, our girls started talking about how frustrating it can be to be in school and be forced to read books about people that just weren't like them. They're not of color, they're not women, not women of color, nothing, and how annoying that can be. And that turned into a very lively discussion about the girls' favorite books and TV shows and music videos that had girls and women like them in them and how great that was. Now, one mentee, Amalia, was absolutely struck by this conversation. And at the end, she stood up, turned to mentors and said, Marley is 11. I'm nine. I have two years to do something amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> the next week, she came back into mentoring with a list of all her goals for the next two years, one of which included writing a book. Another story. We had a bio on Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, and subsequently, the activity was a debate. Now, this was around Thanksgiving, so the, so the uh, debate topic was, should we eat turkeys for Thanksgiving? And let me tell you, it got heated. <laughs> Pencils flying, hair being pulled, tears, I objects. But at the end, got all the girls back together and said, all right, here's the point. You can have any opinion you want to have, any at all, as long as you have the facts to back it up, the gall to defend it, and the patience to listen to the other side. Now, fast forward a few months, it's spring, we go into mentoring, and the girls are staging a coup, and they say, you guys told us that we could have any opinion we want to have, any at all, as long as we have the facts to back it up, the gall to defend it, and the patience to listen to the other side, right? And we were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, we are sick and tired of crafts. <laughs> Each girl came with a piece of paper outlining all of her points for arguing. They all took turns reading aloud and left, left time for rebuttals at the end for the mentors. So if you're wondering, yeah, we did indeed hard band crafts the rest of the semester. No more of that, just debates and mock trials. This last story is a personal one. So you see my hair now, it's pretty curly and fluffy but I didn't always wear it like this. In fact, for the first three years of college, I wore it, oh boy, like that. Pinned straight down to my shoulders. I didn't really know how I wanted to present myself racially at that point, so I just stuck with straight hair. But one day, I was on the way to mentoring, and I was very, very late, and I got caught in a downpour. Now, I'm sure anyone in this room who has curly hair can relate to this. When my hair gets wet, it turns into a huge afro. So I walked into mentoring, put one toe in there, and the girls flipped out. Alicia, oh my god, your hair is huge. Why is it so wet? What's going on? Ah. But one mentee, Talia, with her fingers up in this picture right here, was pretty quiet. She touched my hair, and then hers, my hair, and then hers. Talia and I had bonded before about how we both chose to wear our hair straight, even though naturally it was very textured. So I knew she was thinking something, but I didn't want to pry, so I didn't ask, and I just left her alone. The next week, I go back into mentoring, and Talia has her hair curly, too. And I said, Talia, your hair looks awesome. Why did you change it? And she said, Alicia, I saw that you could do it, so I knew that I could do it, too. It was one of the most significant moments of my entire mentoring career, and probably my life, and is the main reason why I wear my hair curly today. So. With all this talk about role modeling and representation and showing up, I want to bring it back to this room. How can you empower the girls and women in your life? Well, in Switch, we believe in focusing on three things. Strong, loud, and proud. When we teach girls to be strong, it means teaching them to excel as far as they can possibly go. Teach girls that strength is good and comes in many different forms and sizes. Most importantly, teach them that gender does not define how strong they can, should, and will be. Proud. Teach girls to be self-advocates. Show them that pride is good, especially pride in themselves, and remind them that any pride they have in themselves is pride that they earned. Loud, the most important. <laughs> teach girls and women in your life to take up as much space as they possibly can physically, mentally, emotionally. And most importantly, teach young girls from an early age key phrases. 
Don't interrupt me. I wasn't done talking. That's sexist. And the most critical, I said no. Now, all these things are not mutually exclusive. The three come together to form what we call the cycle of mutual empowerment. If you want to empower girls and women in your life, turn to this. Now, if I didn't have women show up for me in my life, if my girls didn't show up for me in my life, I would not be where I am today. But because I found my place in the cycle of mutual empowerment, I am now the co-director of Strong Women, Strong Girls at Northeastern. So I leave you with this. Feminism and female empowerment is for everybody. If you're a woman in this room, you have a job to do. It's to show up for your fellow women and girls. And then you're not off the hook either. Listen to women. Use your voice and whatever privileges you have to lift up their voices too. Everyone can show up. Find your place in the cycle of mutual empowerment. You'll be surprised at how much you can empower others and how much you can empower yourself. Thank you.